My name is Carl Gay. I'm a, a thoracic medical oncologist at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And my NetRF funded project is characterizing chemo-resistant persister cells in relapsed high-grade neuroendocrine carcinomas. I was initially drawn to net research by the fact that as a uh, thoracic medical oncologist, I was routinely being referred patients that did not have lung cancer, but had other neuroendocrine neoplasms. Uh, I specialize in, in, in one of those that, that, that occurs in the lung, uh, and a lot of the others are treated like that. Uh, but it was clear to me that this was a disenfranchised patient population, patients that lacked an expert in, in their field and lacked anyone that was driving research uh, for these patients that had extra pulmonary neuroendocrine carcinomas. Uh, and so I saw an unmet need and, and I was drawn to it because it was clear that these patients needed someone to advocate for them and to push the research ahead. Our project deals in a term that, that sounds sort of jargony, chemo-resistant persister cells, but it's, it's actually exactly what it sounds like. So one of the really heartbreaking features of neuroendocrine carcinomas in particular is that patients will initially often have a tremendous response to therapy. And so there's an initial period of elation, um, and that's very short-lived. These patients almost immediately relapse after these, this initial response. And so it's clear that there are cells that are surviving, the, the initial treatment, whether it's with chemotherapy or immunotherapy, and those cells are not always detectable on scans, uh, but they come back in a way that's, they come back with a vengeance, I guess you would say. And so what we're trying to do is really focus on those cells, try to not only detect them, but figure out what is unique about them that A, allows them to evade the initial treatment and survive when all of their their brothers and sisters within the tumor fail to, but also how we can target them differently because just repeating the same thing over and over and expecting them to, to behave any differently is, is, is never gonna work. In terms of progress that we've made since our NetRF funding started, um, this is now our, into our second uh, NetRF funded project. And so initially, we weren't even sure whether or not we could identify these patients at a large enough rate in order to do anything with them. They're, they come from all different, all different departments, even within a major cancer center like ours. Uh, and so initially it was just trying to make sure that we could collect the samples, make the models in order to do this testing. That went well, and I think it, the sky was the limit at that point. And so now we've been able to actually test drugs on those models, do molecular profiling of those models to see what makes their DNA, their RNA, their protein distinct from other tumors like them. Um, and we've gotten to the point now where we have real therapeutic ideas for them. Um, we've tested some novel drugs that we've designed in our lab that seem to be working in these populations. Um, and I think we're finally understanding kind of what makes these tumors distinct from, from other tumors. The real question for us is whether or not there is something that we can do to eliminate, you might call it minimal residual disease, the disease that persists despite the initially successful treatment. Uh, and I think certainly that, that is possible, but we need to know, know our enemy. And so we have to shift away from our successes in the easier to treat cells and really focus on those cells that are very hardy, very persistent, and ultimately are the, the, the life limiting and, and rate limiting factors that we face with this disease. So I think there's a really immediate clinical impact of this work in that uh, you know, if we can identify these, these, these tumor cells, there may already be drugs available that will work better for them. We're just missing the forest for the, for, for the trees when, when, when we treat these patients. Uh, but I think moreover, if we can identify them, we can characterize them. And if those drugs don't already exist that we could repurpose, we can actually identify targets within that population uh, for, for drugs that, that we can develop ourselves. The NetRF funding is, is, is tremendously uh, valuable to, the, to this research. These diseases are, for lack of a better term, sort of orphan diseases. Uh, there, there's not a lot uh, of funding available for them, but I think what we have shown is that these tumors can be collected together, and so you take multiple rare tumors, put them together. It's not so rare anymore, but in order to get that initial seed funding to, to prove that concept and to move the field along, you have to have donor funds like, like those that come from the NetRF um, for patients that are invested in these rare, rare tumors and their families and, and other interested donors in order, to, you know, in order to do those initial seed projects that then expand the field and, and move it forward. So just want to express tremendous gratitude to, to everyone that supports NetRF, to NetRF itself for supporting our work as well.